Now, the rise of online shopping could be under threat in Uganda. You see, recent tax proposals over there on both mobile money and, of course, content streaming services could make it essentially difficult to continue shopping online. From Kampala, here's CGTN's Leon Senyange. Nixon J is a regular online shopper with an almost unlimited choice on what to buy. The journeys downtown and queues in shops are a thing of the past for him. Anything that you need, you can um, go to their website and uh, press an order. You need food. As well, you can press an order and have food. I mean, it's much more convenient. It's redefining shopping and uh, life as well. And the ease of online shopping is growing drastically. But government proposals to introduce social media and mobile taxes could halt this trend. In the prices of the products in themselves, they will be increasing. Besides that, uh, that's like saying since Kampara is uh, the hub for everything, increase the jam. I mean, the government needs to ideally look into that. According to Jumia, one of Uganda's leading platforms, over 70% of Ugandans who shopped online last year preferred using mobile devices. At least 16% opted for mobile money. In an ideal world, mobile money would have absolutely no additional cost to it. So any cost that you are going to put on mobile money is going to steer people away from this really brilliant solution to the less efficient alternatives. Several reasons are being put forward as to why these new taxes are needed. The government says the levies could raise the much needed revenue from the users of these technologies and claims it will help boost security in Uganda. President Museveni has also criticized social media sites for promoting gossip and time wasting. However, rights activists are concerned that that move could stifle freedom of expression. And some experts warn any taxes on the platforms will shut some consumers out. We now have a situation where many Ugandans are now financially included. And, and my proposal and appeal is that let's use that information, let's use that data. Don't just simply look at the volume of transactions going through mobile money. But if the new taxes are passed by Parliament, they will come into effect quickly on the 1st of July this year. Leon Sanyanga CGTN, Kampala, Uganda. So then let's get a, a finer sense, a granular sense of exactly how these specific proposals may affect e-commerce in the country. Ham Namakajo is the country manager of Jumia's Ugandan subsidiary. He joins us now live from Kampala. Thank you for your time this evening, sir. Um, for context, to start us off, Uganda is estimated to be home to about 42 million people by the end of last year. How much of that is the addressable market for e-commerce right now? All right, thank you for having me. Uh, I believe anyone who has uh, access to the internet uh, in, in Uganda basically can, uh, is, a, is a potential e-commerce customer. So I'd put that about 7 million uh, people in Uganda. All right, so 8 out of 10 clients in Uganda do access your site uh, through mobile directly. Given this proposed introduction of a 1% levy on mobile money transactions, a 3 US cents per day levy on all data-enabled SIM cards, how would that affect traffic to your platform and purchases made on it? It will uh, definitely have a dampening effect. I mean, it's, it's, it's really unfortunate because uh, all stakeholders involved in, in, in the industry should be working together to basically remove uh, barriers to access, which we've been doing for the past few years. Uh, so any taxes that are, are, are added on to usage of uh, the Internet will definitely have a dampening effect on traffic that goes to, uh, to e-commerce sites like uh, ourselves, uh, Jumia. So... Uh, yeah, I think the government uh, should rethink uh, this, this particular proposal so as to not uh, dampen the gains we've had in the past few years. Right. Just a quick follow-up on that. I do recall reading one of the white papers that Jumia does produce uh, pretty much on an annual basis. And remember, most of your clients prefer to pay by cash. Mobile money was the preferred means of settlement for about 20% or so of your clients. In that sense, therefore, might the effect of trying to levy more money, this 1% transaction on mobile money, won't the effect of that really essentially be a non-issue? Uh, 
I mean, the, the reason why cash on delivery is, uh, is the most preferred method of payment right now is the, the industry is still young and there's still a lot of trust. So people prefer to first, you know, try out the service without committing any money up front. And then uh, once they see the service works, they get the, the product as they wanted it, uh, they can go on to other payment methods. So we've been seeing mobile money grow as a preferred payment method and definitely uh, increase in taxes, uh, levy of these taxes is going to uh, slow that down somewhat. All right, uh, following up on that, a Geopol survey in December last year pointed out that one of the hurdles that limits takeoff uh, of e-commerce in countries like Uganda is, as you mentioned, that lack of trust. And that takes us back to that question of the preference to pay for goods on delivery instead of paying by mobile or by cards. Uh, to what extent, though, does this preference to pay for, for things on cash on delivery make your business riskier and increase your costs? Because essentially that implies that your delivery guys will be walking around with quite a bit of cash on them, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's definitely every time you're handling cash uh, and uh, large amounts, uh, they, there's risk. So what we're trying to do is uh, de-risk. Uh, so 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 let me let me walk that back a bit. So the issue is again, people when they're starting out will uh, obviously manage risk on their side. So they'll they'll want to pay on delivery, uh, find out that the business, uh, you know, the 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 service works very well and then uh, maybe put a bigger uh, order in and uh, are open to other methods of, uh, of payment. So to remove these risks, uh, sort of this riskiness from the customer, we provide things like uh, seven, day uh, seven day returns where the customer will get it, uh, have it for seven days and if they're not happy with the product, they can take it back. So that tends to allow customers to, uh, you know, be open to paying up front uh, instead of cash and delivery. And then that reduces the risk for us. But definitely uh, cash and delivery increases risk, but it's necessary in, in uh, the current situations we're in. Indeed. I'd love to continue the conversation, but we'll have to leave it there for the time being. Ham Namakajo in Kampala. Thank you very much for your time.